Ladies and gentlemen and hackers of all ages, welcome to another installment of How To with M2. Today's video is hacking for dinglings. Number one, please forget everything you think you know about hacking. Another firewall? A bit of fascination. This is in real time. I'll create a GUI interface using Visual Basic. See if I can track an IP. What? With some limited value, let's explore the acronyms that the CSI cyber investigator was spewing out. Once again. I'll create a GUI interface using Visual Basic. See if I can track an IP. A GUI, sometimes referred to as GUI, is simply your graphic interface. Consider a graphic version of a regular remote control and make it adjustable and customizable. In short, it's the things you click on to make your selections. Visual Basic is an award-winning software. It's been around for about 30 years, developed by Microsoft. Visual Basic, which is very easy to learn, will give you RAD, or Rapid Application Development, the ability to quickly and easily develop applications. And as I'm sure you're aware, applications can be fun are very useful, but most importantly, are extremely dynamic. Now, IP or Internet Protocol. Just about every person in the modern world knows about IP, but very few know how it works. And just like a locksmith that can get in your front door or into your car in less than 30 seconds, someone knowledgeable with internet protocol can get into your computer in less time than that. So the primary protection that is used against someone getting into your computer? Another firewall? Another firewall? Another firewall? It is absolutely certain, without firewall protection, the internet could not exist. And if you were to pause or let down your firewall protection for even less than a minute, most likely the results would be complete hacking of your computer. So now let's shift gears and assuming you have firewall protection in place, how would your computer be hacked? Robot Model B-9, designed and computerized as a mechanized electronic aid for Earth voyagers engaged in astral expeditions. Please consider a very large room filled with 1,000 highly efficient office workers. Well, that is just a small fraction of what a well-written computer robot program can do. So now let's make that number of efficient office workers 10,000. So now with our small army of 10,000 efficient office workers, we're going to give them all instructions. And these instructions will be to go fishing. And with our 10,000 workers fishing, we will also make sure each one has optimal bait. Pick any bank you wish. And I can assure you it has all been cloned, including graphics and user ID input application software. For your consideration, a very well prepared, almost perfect graphic reproduction of a bank's request for the person to log in 
to confirm their data. Now even though we've all been warned many times to look out for these scam emails or other messages, a certain percentage of people will unknowingly enter their information. And as the code and the name is acquired, we can attempt to log into seemingly legitimately knowing that many people use the same code multiple times for different applications or more plainly stated different accounts that they have online and to make matters even worse than that this information is commonly sold openly to people that regularly bid on this information so we have a name and we have a code that is used for that name to go into a major banking account since we can assume that a person's bank account is important to them we can also assume that it's their primary code that they would typically use for more important applications or accounts. So we are going to use that code, that name, and perhaps corresponding email address to log into their Microsoft primary account or their Apple iOS account or any other account we wish to get into. And of course, once we have access through the firewall, which is seemingly legitimate access, we have almost full control of the computer and can raid all the information and find out more about all the accounts they have, including bank balances, including credit card numbers, including a whole slew of vital information to that person without them knowing. All 50 states in the United States have very serious penalties for hacking and cyber crime. In Texas, you can be charged with a first degree felony and a sentence of up to life in prison. Yet with this, cybercrime and hacking remains persistent and quite common. Here we see, back in 1938, a movie short with the Three Stooges that are going to infest a mansion with all types of pests so that they will be hired to exterminate the pests in the mansion. It is difficult to believe that people get into hacking for the sake of hacking itself. We would have to believe that the vast majority of people hack for the purpose of cybercrime and fraud. And one of the more blatantly obvious scams we've all seen is when we are infected with some type of a virus or malware or worm. And then someone steps up to clean up or solve the problem. And this, of course, is usually for monthly reoccurring revenue or some type of an annual charge. Now, after careful consideration and a good amount of study, here are the top things that you need to do to avoid hacking and cybercrime in general. First, and probably most important, 
is your password? If your password is password, it would take about 0.29 seconds to hack your password. If you changed your password to password using an at symbol and a capital O, it would take 14 years to hack your password. In 1945, in Los Alamos, New Mexico, the United States, there was a high-level top-secret project called the Manhattan Project, which was the research and development of nuclear weapons. Every scientist that was assigned duty at this research and development facility was given a lock which they would put a four digit code into for their security of their personal locker. It was later found that 30% of the locks were the scientists last four digits of their social security number in order. From this, we can assume that about 30% of all PIN numbers that are four digits correspond to the user's last four digits of their social security number. Never ever use the same password on different sites or different accounts. It's very important to assign different passwords to different accounts. Cyber hackers are very aware that people use the same password multiple times. Never ever share important information with anyone you cannot verify online. If you've met someone in a chat room or met someone on a social site or blog, if you cannot completely verify who they are and have transparency to their identity, do not share yours. As overly protective and almost paranoid as this may sound, unfortunately, it is the state of the current internet that we use. Never ever assume that a person or entity you don't know is being truthful. Never ever expose important information on an unsecure or questionable Wi-Fi. Never ever open unsolicited attachments where you do not know the source. You receive an email. It goes to your direct inbox you see there is an attachment. Do not open the attachment unless you know the person who has sent it and you know what the content will most likely be. This is also very important, although I know we've all done it. Never ever pay for anything on the internet directly from your personal bank account. There are plenty of services you can use to pay for items and they will not disclose your information. And these include Apple Pay, PayPal, and Google Wallet. 
Cybercrime is a type of modern day purse or satchel snatching. Here is some information you should never share unless it is for a good validated reason. Number one, your birth date. Remember, you can change your name and you can even change your social security number, but you cannot change your date of birth. Therefore, it is used as a static piece of information to identify you. And although you think you're gonna get a real nice birthday gift by offering it, it usually is used for identity purposes. Never ever share your social security number with anyone, whether it be online or standing at the mall filling out potential credit card applications. Use your social security number wisely and only those times where you know it is going to be kept secure and used for a very good reason which will benefit you. There is a somewhat recent mega trend for job posting sites. Many of these sites are marketing sites and also phishing sites that are disguised as job posting sites. You need to be extremely careful on filling out job applications and online information forms. This information is commonly sold. You need to be extra careful and don't offer your information unless you know who is acquiring it and you can validate that person or entity. Now, although this advice is going to be in the gray area ethically, I feel it is appropriate considering the modern state of the internet at large. If you are told your birth date is required, yet you're not completely comfortable in supplying it, however you want to move forward, you may wish to consider providing an alternate date which you use on a consistent basis. Here we see a birth date of March 15th, 1980. The birth date used will be March 14th, 1980. And the reason it should be consistent is that that site may be legitimately using your birth date for identity purposes within their organization. So as long as you're consistent, there would not be a problem. And a person would have a problem with identity theft since it is not in fact your birth date. Same with social security number. Change or reverse two of the numbers of your social security number and again be consistent so that you are not stating different social security numbers. If there is a problem, it is well understood that people do simply make that common dyslexic mistake and reverse numbers. And again, of course, if you see this as an ethical violation, 
in that you're misstating a material fact, then kindly just avoid it. However, if you're making a sincere attempt to counter any possible wrongdoing by others on the internet, I believe it is a good way to protect yourself. Hopefully you were able to gain from this video. Please click like if you did and be sure you're subscribed to this channel. Your input is needed. Please be sure to comment below and let us know if you have been a victim of cybercrime and how you believe it has occurred. All comments will receive a helpful expert response.